V. And I was at the coach towers this morning where many, uh, at least many people are trying to get back to business, those who are operating along the Kampa Road. But this side of Buganda Road next to CPS, at least a few of them have opened their shops because the street was opened yesterday. There is some sense of paranoia, the fear, the suspicion is so high within the city. And the dwellers asking what their leaders are saying, what are they doing. That's why I'm here at the home of the Kampala Central MP, Mohamed Insereko, to let us know what Parliament is saying, what he, as the area MP, is saying, and is what he wants the people he leads to do. Good morning to you, Honorable. Uh, good morning to you, uh, viewers, um, and thank you, Mr. Ambide. Of course, I would like to uh, convey my condolences to the families of those that lost their loved ones, the innocent ones, and uh, to the victims, the casualties that are still in hospitals. Mm. Uh, please bear the strength of God, we are with you, and uh, for those that have lost business as well, on Parliamentary Avenue and uh, CPS, of course, in my constituents. It comes as a sad day. It's a cast. It's not a cast of a shadow, but uh, we can only say that we shall uh, overcome, uh, no matter what it is. There is no one. There is no one that has the right to take lives of innocent people, um, whether in way of arms or illegitimately. Mm. The only way is through even courts of law. But even through courts of law. It has been ruled that the death penalty should be done away with. So, in my opinion, I would like to say that it was a very sad moment. It was a moment that was uncalled for. And we condemn, we condemn, or we pass condemnation to all those that are perpetrators of what happened in Kampala Central. Wherever you are and whatever the notion you, you're after and whatever the cause, nothing justifies taking lives of innocent people. For the explosion that happened along the parliamentary avenue, one mm -hmm. would expect, maybe because it was already 10, Honorable Bonsire could have been maybe <laughs> within the parliament or within the principles of parliament. What was the experience? Where were you then? Well, no, uh, where I was at the moment, I think we were doing some errands at the playing ground. Uh, we were doing our exercises, routine exercises, but that is the wish of God that I was not at that place at that time. So any one of you could have been there, or your relatives, or any person mm -hmm. could have been there, and no matter what uh, inclination you are, what religion you are, uh, what color you are, really indiscriminate violence, or violence, whatever it is, is unacceptable. Police and the security agencies are doing investigations. They yeah. have begun already arresting some people, and there are cries from some sections of the people that they seem to ta target some sections of some re religion. They see, people are saying that whenever security is crying out a soup like that, they target, seem, seem to target a certain religion. And wha how are you looking at this? Well, um, unless you put task uh, to the security agencies to explain that, Yes, of course, the names that appear belong to people from my religion, which is uh, Islam. But I would like to be categorical and clear on this matter. Islam does not condone violence in any way, and we as Muslims condemn these attacks. But also indiscriminate arrests. You remember after the murder of the late AIGP Kawesa, many Muslims were indiscriminately arrested. This is coming from a pattern of history. Mm. Therefore, the government must come out to explain by showing proof that the person we are arresting tried to resist. That is why there was the introduction of camcorders on law enforcement officers in other countries mm -hmm. that move with the video, move with the camera. Document you, evidence. Yes, even if it's produced by the Uganda police or by the uh, forces. I know people will think it's bizarre, but it's being carried out in other countries so that also, enforcement officers are brought to accountability on the magnitude of force that they use. Because now it's becoming a trend that as we are apprehending this one, they try to resist. But there is no evidence whatsoever that backs up their claim. We are not saying that those that are suspected to be doing acts of terror should be left scot-free. And we are not saying it's an easy ride or it's a joy ride for them to go and apprehend those people. 
But now, let's have some bit of evidence that, yes, we had a calm camera, which you can pin on the enforcement officers, and we see resistance. No one will blame you if someone was trying to resist, and you used reasonable force to put them out of action or to try to apprehend them. But if it becomes stories, and mm. the same stories reoccurring day after day, it happened to Zebra. Zebra was not necessarily a Muslim, but it Zebra happened. Senyange. Yes, but it happened to many other people now. Uh, it has been reoccurring to those after uh, the incident of uh, Genoa Mara. Maybe it will deny us from knowing who the real perpetrators are. The evi evidence, evidence, and evidence is what we need. Now, you can see that mm. Ugandan troops in Somalia are facing a huge problem, that they went back and did retribution. Yes, they have been brought to book, but at least there, there was some evidence. Now, here what the countrymen want to know is where is the evidence, so that people do not feel stereotyped. People from our Muslim community are keeping on calling us that is everyone under threat? Is every Muslim under threat? Mm. And we have to, you know, give them reassurance that it's not because of your religion that you're being targeted. And that is the role of the police force and the enforcement agencies to come up with either calm coders or move with someone you really documenting. Because, I mean, you've gathered the evidence, you're moving towards the target. If we can have that video evidence like we saw, from those that detonated bombs the other time. Then the public would say, yes, police is exonerated here because it was really acting. But you know, the way. enforcement officers were calling on, even the uh, police officers, uh, the ones who are calling for vigilance, but the am amount of energy, uh, they are calling for uh, vigilance. When you look at the amount of energy they put into enforcement of curfew, enforcement of curfew guidelines against COVID-19, and when you look at this big challenge of dealing with terrorism, do they match, in your view? Well, now you cannot know. You see, police would be coming up, or security agencies, with briefings and with video proof that, listen, we had this number of threats. There were about 40. We went and carried out these arrests. This is what we found there. Because they have said they have arrested over 81 people, produce their, you know, if there are audios mm. that link them to these terror attacks, if there is any evidence, please display it for the people so that you gain confidence in the eyes of the people and see to it that the people take part in this fight against terrorism by even giving you more information. Probably you're concealing more than what they would help you uh, further this fight against terrorism. Therefore, uh, my, my advice to police is in community policing, try as much as possible to come out with, I, I know you're, you'll be jittery to say that maybe some may, 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 may be tipped off and they flee, but okay, after apprehending them, can you bring that evidence like you brought it on TV of those that detonated the bombs? That's what the public wants in order to get that confidence that, listen, this guy was linked to X, this one was linked to Y, and this is what happened. Finally, but, speak from, to, the, mm. but from the audios that you had, for example, after the, uh, the police mm. claimed it had uh, eliminated uh, Sheikh Chirev, mm. I mean, the families are saying completely different things that were, they came and beat us up and X, Y, and Z. So where is the version of the people that went there to apprehend him? And what shows that he was resisting arrest? Mm. Therefore, let's try to do the right things even if it's for the right cause, not the wrong things for the right cause. Finally, I speak to the people, the, the dwellers whom you lead. Uh, some of them are now battling with the loans. They are battling high commodity prices, the high fuel prices, the inflation is even up. Now they even have to deal with the fear and suspicion of terrorism. What would, would you tell them as you conclude? Well, uh, I would like to tell all our people that we are in harsh economic times. Moving out of the pandemic and trying to transition, Children have not gone back to school, so partially our economy is in lockdown. And with the curfew still going on, of course, there, are negative, there is a huge negative impact on our economy. So our indices clearly show that our economy is a little bit not functioning at its best. So what can we do most? There are some short-term solutions. Those that can embrace trying to sell online, yes. For us as your policy makers, we shall see to it that we fight as much as possible 
to try and relax the taxes. Government yesterday introduced uh, about 100 billion, which I think is small, in form of support for SMEs, which is going to partner up with banks. For me, I'm not convinced with this. So I know there are a lot of challenges that we cannot all finish in one program. I cannot talk about them, all of them, in one program and, and conclude. But what I can say is that we are going for harsh economic times, yeah. but I'm trying to tell people to be resilient. But also some people do not make it a job to become beggars. There are some people that have made it a job to become beggars. There are jobs out there, and someone comes and tells you, please give me 20,000. But when you tell them there is a job for cleaning at a mall somewhere for 300,000, then they say, ha, ugonza, ate si gukora. So I'll for, see it out. I'll see it out. For you, who is looking for 20,000 to beg? Why can't you be a cleaner somewhere for 300,000? So there's also a mentality of our young people trying to despise work. For me, this is unacceptable. These are some of the challenges we have to overcome. As we try to skill the people, the people should also try to change their mindset. Shift. Do not sit there in your shop and think people will come every the other day. No. Move online. Try to be aggressive. Try to advertise. Try to change Thank you. the way you've been doing your businesses. Therefore, I know we can do a lot from our side. From policy, we need to relax taxes so that taxes go down and we encourage people to trade. We need Thank to you. create a stimulus package mm. for our traders and help bail them out. Lower interest rates. NSSF, like you remember I told you, social okay. security money. Thank you so much. I know Honorable Muhammad in Sereko will be with you still expounding more on these issues tomorrow. Gambo Tevita, that will be on at 9 to 11 a.m. with Frank Wawusimbi. Just stay tuned to NTV. This is Stephen Imbi, Don Fefe Swechibuga, now handing you back to studio. Follow me, Wusiku, for concluding remarks of the show. Thank you.